Hello to all you lovely and wonderful people and welcome to my 30 cute Christmassy doodle video. In this video we're going over 50 different holiday themed doodles that you may need this year. So without further ado, let's get started. Welcome back, my name is Lynette Clark and we're going to kick off with a gingerbread man. As per usual, I always draw everything I do out in pencil first um, before I make it more permanent with either pen or paint. The way I find it easy to draw a gingerbread man is to start off with a stick man first and then simply go around your shape and thicken everything up. I kind of did that a little bit too much with his head, but never mind. And then add a smiley face and some buttons and the wiggly lines for icing on his hands and on his feet. Candy cane next. I draw the hooked candy cane shape first and then thicken it up on the underside and then add some angled stripes. For my holly leaf doodles, I start off with a cluster of three berries and then draw a couple of the scalloped prickly edge leaves coming from the berries. Once I've done that, add a couple of flicks for the uh, veins of the leaves and that's the holly done. The fourth doodle is some simple fern or pine type of leaf shape, starting off with a line and then simply adding some tiny pointed little leaves coming off from the stem. Next up is a Christmas pudding. I drew a flat bottom circle in pencil first and then added a plate at the bottom and some squiggly droopy lines on the top of the circle shape to give the appearance of either cream or custard. I messed up the lines on the plate a little bit so I'm just filling that in and then no one need know. And just like we drew the holly, um, I'm adding some on top of the Christmas pudding to decorate it and then adding some circles to the main body of said pud to give the appearance of currants and raisins. For my gift tag doodle, I drew a simple kind of pointed roofed house shape that you kind of did when you were a child, but kind of skewed the shape a little bit and then made it curl up at the bottom, adding hearts and kisses and a string coming from it. Nicely tying in from the gift tag, next is a present. So I started off with a rectangle and then drew a slightly longer, thinner one for the top of the lid of the present. And then drew another vertical thin rectangle down the middle of the box for the ribbon and then added a simple bow on the top. To finish off the doodle, I also added a gift tag. Now you may notice slightly above that there is a snow globe, a snowflake and a mince pie next to this box. Unfortunately, someone forgot to press the record button when I was doing these, so apologies for that. I do, however, do another snowflake later on in the video. Next up is a plump looking five pointed star. I find it helps to draw a simple flower shape and then draw straight lines coming to a point over the rounded petals to create a star like this. Next up is this woolly bobble hat. I drew an upside down U shape with slightly bumply, bumply, bumpy lines and then a bumpy almost rectangular shape for the base of the hat. And for the pom pom on the top, I drew a circular shape first, but then instead of making it all smooth, I made the edges all jaggedy so that it looks like a pom-pom. I added a simple zigzag design to my hat, but you can add whatever you want, and then made it look a little bit more woolen by adding all these squiggly lines. For a very simple pine cone shape, I initially drew an egg shape first and then just filled that egg in with these squiggly lines to create a pine cone. My next doodle, I wanted to create a little letter to Santa, so I started off with a rectangle again, but this time with a triangle on top, adding an X to the rectangle to create an envelope shape, then another rectangle peeking out of the envelope for the letter. Next up is another little fat star, but this time it's a tree ornament. This time I added a hole at the top and a hook so that it can be hung from the tree and then some lines so it looks like it's stitching and a little sparkle design in the middle. 
Next up is a Yule Log. I began with like a sausage shape when I drew it out in pencil first, then flattened the ends of the sausage to make it look like a log. Making sure I add some jaggedy lines so it looks more like wood and then added a twig or a branch stemming from that log. And then decorated it with some holly and some foliage. And then filled it in with some line work. For a candle I started with a flame which was a pointy petal shape and then added a line for the wick. And then on top of another rectangle shape I added the squiggly lines like I did with the Christmas pudding and finished it off with some foliage and some holly. Excuse me for a second whilst I try to get my hands working properly again. It's starting to get really cold here and we have no heating in the studio so I don some gloves and carry on. <laughs> So for the next doodle, we're doing a Christmas stocking. When drawing out in pencil first, I started with a basic sock shape. And because I wanted it to look like a woolen sock, I added a cuff to the top and then made sure I add some detail to the toes and the heel of the sock. I finished it off with a zigzaggy pattern like I had done on my hat and then added some spots and also a little tag at the top of the sock so that it can be hung from the fireplace. So we've done one tree ornament already but we haven't done any baubles yet. So here is my first one. The footage went a little bit wrong when I did this one but don't worry I am doing another bauble later on in the video so I'll explain the process a little bit better then. Next up is some hot chocolate. For the handle I made a backward C and then made it fatter, um, added a saucer to the bottom of the cup and because it's a festive hot chocolate I wanted to add a candy cane poking out from the cream and the marshmallows on top. Apart from the smell of pine trees, nothing smells more Christmassy to me than cinnamon so next up we're doing cinnamon sticks. So when I drew them out first I created some wonky sausage shapes. Then at the end that is facing you, draw like a wonky E shape. And then once I drew my initial cinnamon stick, I added a few others tucked behind it. And then finished it off with some ribbon tied around the stack of cinnamon sticks. Then I did a quick little acorn, which is basically an egg with a hat on. <laughs> Starting off with two lines that I cross over, I then thicken those lines off and finish the ends with a fringe. I add a similar pattern as to what I did with the hats so that they match. And then add some wavy lines to give it the texture of wool. So next up is another tree decoration, but this time a heart shape. So I draw an elongated heart and add a loop of ribbon at the top. I decorate it with a heart in the middle and some dots around the edge. I add some stripes to the ribbon and then finish off our heart with some very simplistic snowflake shapes. So we've done the hat and the scarf so it makes sense to do some mittens to go along with them. I drew a very basic mitten shape and then a long looping wavy line to connect them both. To create that long string that you used to feed through the arms of your coat when you were a little kid so you didn't end up losing your gloves. a little design to the mittens to match the scarf and the hat that we've already done. Another wintry spice that I just had to include was cloves, which are incredibly simple to draw. They're basically stick shapes with pointy bits at the end and then finished off with a circle at the top. And seeing as I've done cinnamon and cloves, it made sense to do some star anise, which is simply drawing a pointed petal flower shape. 
And then once you've got the basic shape of the petals, you just add smaller ones on the inside. I wanted to add some more botanical doodles. So I start with these two stems and then add these tiny little leaf shapes coming off from the stem. And then it just looks like a non-specific wintry berry branch shape. Next up is a little mini gingerbread house. Using the quintessential house shape that you probably drew as a child, I make sure that all the points of the house are curved slightly so that it looks more like a cookie. Obviously, I add a little door and some windows. I finish off the trim of the roof with a scalloped edge and also to the top of the chimney. So what's up next is a string of Christmas lights. I start off by doing a long looping line and then thicken it up a little bit. Along that string I add a little base for the bulb first and then we start by adding these oniony shaped lights all along that line. And you can space these out as far or as close together as you would like. For a bell I'm doing a sort of upside down U shape with a circle for the bell clapper and finishing it off with a bow at the top. I could have also decorated it with holly as well, but I just left it with a bow. I know it's some people's tradition to leave cookies out for Santa, so I'm doing some chocolate, chocolate, chocolate chip cookies. In our house, we traditionally leave out mulled wine and mince pies and also a carrot for the reindeer, but I'd be interested to know what do you guys leave out for Santa? Next up is a nutcracker. So I started off drawing a stick man with his arms down by his side and then a big rectangle on the top of his head, gave him huge eyebrows and a massive moustache. I made sure to add some big teeth that all nutcrackers have. On the top of his shoulders he needed some epaulettes. I'm not going to lie, I actually had to look up what they were called. Then I added a belt and the bottom of his jacket that kind of looks like a little bit of a skirt. I forgot a beard, he needed a beard. Wait a minute. And then to finish him off he needed his trousers and his boots and a base for him to stand on. and also a little design on his hat. The next doodle is a Christmas card. I started off with a rectangle and then a triangle at the top so that it looks like it's slightly open and then just drew a very simple little design on the front of Holly and Merry Xmas. I'll tell you what, I never realised how difficult it was going to be for me to come up with 50 different Christmassy doodles. I did a Christmas doodle video last year and I really didn't want to repeat too many of the designs that I did in that video. If you're interested then please do check it out because there are some different ones that I haven't done in this video. So next up is another tree decoration 
Uh, this time I'm going for an oniony shaped bauble. So to get this teardrop shape a little bit easier I drew a circle first and then added a triangle to the bottom and then made the outline of the shape of the bauble from that and then added a little box and a loop for where the hook goes through. Next up is a lantern. This is another design that requires a box with a triangle on the top. I added a cross in the middle of the box and then made them fatter for the windows and then added a long rectangle at the bottom of said box <laughs> to create the base of the lantern. And once I've got my basic shape, I coloured it in with these sketchy little lines to give it a raw iron look. Once again with some more winter foliage, I'm going to do a little pine sprig this time. We'll start with the little line for the stem and then add these little bursts of little lines coming off of your stem and that will create the pine needles. For our next doodle we're doing another candle but this time in a mason style jar. I drew like a basic bottle shape first, um, obviously a little bit fatter, and then drew a couple of connected U-shaped lines to form the threaded neck of the jar. Then drew a bow around the top. Then added a wire kind of handle at the top of the jar. And then finished off this doodle with a very melted looking candle inside the jar. Once again, Lynette forgot to press record again um, whilst I was doing this intentionally wonky Christmas tree, so I'm sorry for that. But next up, I'm doing a doodle of a book, specifically The Night Before Christmas. I wanted to add this um, little book as it's been a Christmas Eve tradition in our house since my eldest had her first Christmas and I continue to read it to all of my clan whilst they tuck into a hot chocolate um, before they go to bed on Christmas Eve. After adding the title of the book there wasn't really much room to um, add an illustration to the front cover so I just finished off with a tiny little wonky tree at the bottom. As we've done some holly, I feel like we should do some ivy. When I drew this out in pencil first, I started off with a long wavy line for the stem of the vine first, and then adding these little spirals and irregular star shapes for the ivy leaves coming from it. Next up is a little parcel or present, but from a different view, from a bird's eye view this time, and it's just basically a little box shape with a cross over the top for some ribbon or string and then a bow on top. Next, we're moving on to a snowflake. Although snowflakes need to be a little bit symmetrical, don't worry about it too much. They don't need to be perfect. So I started off with an X and then drew a couple of lines through it. On some of those lines, I did a petally kind of shape and then on others, I did spiky lines and then added like a starry flower shape in the middle of the snowflake. So this is the last of my tree baubles, I think, um, but this time I'm doing a stripy patterned one. Once I add the lines to the bauble, I then shade in the alternative lines, leaving a gap in between, and then add some dots, which I think end up making this bauble look a bit like a Christingle. Let's draw some mistletoe. Uh, for me, I find it very similar to drawing holly, um, only instead of the pointy scallop types of leaves that holly has, you draw like these long rounded leaves for the mistletoe.
We're almost there, guys. We only have a few more doodles left. Um, well done if you're still watching this video. Um, so we've done a woolly hat and now it's time for a Santa hat. Um, not something that's particularly to do with Christmas as such, but it's something that is very muchly needed around Christmas time. If you have children and you are a parent, then you're going to need all the coffee to deal with all the hecticness that Christmas entails. And then for our very last of our 50 Christmassy doodles, I am doing a very dodgy, <laughs> tacky Christmas jumper. So once I've got a basic shape of a jumper, I've done the sleeves to fit around the doodles that are already on the page. Um, I'm adding the cuffs and the bottom of the jumper and the neck. And then I am going to make stripes on the sleeves and add a very taggy Santa on the front of my jumper. Once I finish adding Santa to the jumper, I also then decide to add some spots to give it that extra tacky Christmassy jumper feel. And that's it. That's our 50 cute Christmassy doodles. I hope that you find this video useful and that it inspires you to get doing some Christmassy doodles. If you enjoyed the video, then please give it a thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, then please consider subscribing to the channel. I have lots more ideas for Christmassy videos coming up, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Take care of yourself. Bye bye.